Good morning and welcome to Love Church. My name's Simon and this is Hooch. Hello. We are part of the team here at Love Church and uh, we are so excited to be with you this morning, wherever you're watching us from. Even though we are physically distant, spiritually we can be together. Um, Hooch, what are we going to be doing this morning? So we will worship. Jamie will lead us into worship. Uh, Tim and Debbie will be speaking to us later and we'll be praying. So basically the whole thing, we're about 45 minutes, so please stay with us. This time like this, we're not going to do anything different. We're still going to put Jesus in the center of everything that we do. And this is just this, Jesus in the center of everything that we do. Fantastic. Why don't I pray to begin? Wherever you are, why don't you just still your heart, pause a moment. You might want to close your eyes. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we love that you are everywhere, that wherever we are right now, you are there with us. And loving Father, we pray, would you send your spirit to move among our every single one of us. And God, we pray, would you be glorified as we worship you this morning? Would you speak to our hearts as we hear from your word? And would we encounter you as we pray? We love you, Jesus. This is all for you. Amen. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah. i 
Christ alone, Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Spirit come, fall on us, overflow like a flood, pour it out, would you pour it out? Spirit come, fall on us, breathe your life into us, pour it out, would you pour it out? Spirit bring through, show your heart. Heaven draw now near to us Holy Spirit, here we are For your glory, kingdom come Your kingdom ahead we are yours to be led send us out would you send us out spirit break through show your heart heaven draw now near to us holy spirit Oh, oh. 
immutable upon your word. Brave and bold, we take your light for all the worlds you see. Holy Spirit, send your fire. Breathe revival. Breathe revival. We're unshakable. Shake a ball upon your word. Brave and bold, we take your light for all the worlds you see. Holy Spirit, send your fire. Breathe revival. Breathe revival. Jesus, that is our longing. That's our heart's cry, Lord, that you breathe revival. That, Lord God, in a world full of fear, full of separation, Lord God, that you would breathe revival. And Lord, we pray, wherever we are able, would you fill us up and send us out. Use us as your hands and feet, Lord God. Jesus, we love you. Fill us with your presence, we pray. We live for your glory. In your name, Lord. Amen. We have Tim and Debs here. We wanted them to just come and speak into the current situation a little bit. Tim's got a few more grey hairs from a crazy week. How are you guys doing? Yeah, we're doing okay. We haven't seen much of Tim this week because he's been making important decisions, but we're doing okay. We've been out, had some fresh air, had some exercise. Um, my children have learned to become slightly less entitled as to what food they eat. When I served them vegetable curry on Monday, they said, we don't want vegetable curry, we want moussaka. And I said, well, the supermarket didn't have any beef, so you're going to have to get used to that. And to be honest, they were not very happy with it. Sorry, children, if you're watching this. Um, but yeah, but we got there. We're doing okay. Um, school's out. Yeah. Um, I'm a teacher and I have done homeschooling before and I'm petrified. So I just put that out there. If you're a parent and you're petrified of your children being there, I'm with you and I'm, I'm qualified. So yeah. Encouraging. Uh, <laughs> what are your... So I think everybody's trying to figure out what life looks like for the next few weeks. What are your some of your top tips for surviving what could be a significant period of time? Yeah, so I think we're going to stick with a routine, not kind of, you know, out there every minute planned, but I think we're going to stick with weekdays. Our schools are sending homework. Um, we've got some workbooks and stuff lined up already. Um, all our kids love reading, which is great, but they are not going to be just sat on the... PlayStation, is it a PlayStation they have? Yeah. That thing that's a fastened to the TV. They're not going to be on that all the day. Um, in fact, they, they've come up with their own schedule, so they're going to get up, they're going to run around the garden instead of doing the school run um, after breakfast, and then we're going to do a certain amount of work. Um, and then I think we'll make sure that we've got some family times. We have dusted off our board games from the cupboard. We have, um, I've got some seeds from the supermarket, very cheap. Nobody is stockpiling seeds, so we're good. So I'm going to plant some seeds in the garden, and we're going to get around to all those jobs that we've been meaning to do for a long time and haven't done that. Equally, I appreciate there's other people for whom that's not going to work. So that's just for us, really. Shall you I just keep holding the microphone so you can't have it? <laughs> they go, hey, you say something now. <laughs> you, you think the kids aren't going to be on the PlayStation the whole time. but <laughs> We'll see. Time will tell. Yeah. I think it's so difficult, isn't it, because... No one knows how long this is going to go on for. Um, and I don't know. I just think we've, we, we've got to, sure, in, enjoy it as much as we can. But I think also, as Debbie says, the, the routines are going to be quite important, I think. And 
uh, certainly our children thrive on a sense of um, routine and normality um, and uh, they're a bit more secure when they've got that and and so I think you know after a couple of days of oh isn't this you know fun there's no school I think actually they, they will need some stability and uh, w we need to have a couple of conversations about how we provide that. And Tim that's probably true for all of us so not everyone's got kids at home um, lots of people at home lonely single perhaps mm. maybe they've got some neighbors who are nearby what what do you want to say to them to encourage them well I think the first thing that we all uh, need to do in this in this church family is to uh, receive God's comfort I think comfort is the word that comes to mind when you know when the crisis hits uh, like this um, it, it's scary it is scary, and I think, you know, as we've said a number of times, we want to say here, if you're sat at home and actually, hand on heart, you're feeling a bit anxious, I think all three of us, everyone here would say, yeah, we are with you. We feel exactly those same things. Uh, it's not weak to admit that. You know, come on, we've been on this emotionally healthy spirituality journey as a church. Uh, let's be free to acknowledge that this is difficult, that we don't know what's going on. We don't know how long this is going to last. Uh, we've got um, very, you know, dear friends who are uh, facing uh, incredibly difficult um, times in their business, um, uh, in family life, as, as uh, members of our families uh, fall ill, wh whether with coronavirus or not. Frankly, at the moment, you know, all you need to do is develop a sniffle and the, the anxiety is there, you know. Uh, and I think we all need to receive um, God's comfort. And, and extend it to others. Uh, someone um, texted me, a, uh, a Simon Tindall in the church texted me 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, verse 3 and 5, says this, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds uh, through Christ. And so this is the first theme, I think, for us as a church family at the moment, is to receive God's comfort. That means spending time with God. Let's keep the Keep all the, the, the habits, the healthy habits that we've learned during uh, emotionally healthy spirituality. Let's keep those going. Don't throw those out. Uh, those are the things that will feed our souls. The daily quiet time, the times of prayer, uh, the meditating on s the promises of scripture, uh, journaling, uh, enjoying creation. All of those kind of things are for, for such a time as this. Um, and I think leaning into our connect group, you know, one of the things that's really encouraged me is to see the connect groups having a go at meeting online. Uh, it's been wonderful seeing some of that. Um, on Alpha on Tuesday night, we tried doing Alpha online. It was a little bit bumpy, uh, but you know we'll learn, and, and next week we'll be will be better. I think these are the moments to uh, lean into that. You know, the connect groups is amazing. We've got new people who are volunteering to start up new online connect groups, so that people in the church who haven't yet been able to join a, a physical connect group because they haven't been able to, uh, maybe they've got kids at home or uh, they've got a work situation that doesn't fit. Actually, now they're finding, oh, well, if, if I can just join f online at home, then great, I'd love to do that. And we've got people volunteering to do that. And uh, the links, if you want to join in to do that, the links are uh, on the website. We'll post them up on social media as well. So, But I think that's the first thing. Um, comfort because my heart really is with you know those business owners the zero hours contract people the, the gig economy workers those in the healthcare those in the education sector oh let, let's let's as a church rally round those guys because uh, it's tough for them um over over these these this initial period fantastic and the holy spirit the god of all comfort will come and meet us and guide yes. us but it feels like we're headed into totally unknown territory. This is totally unprecedented. No, none of us have experienced this before. Comfort is easy to receive when you know you've had comfort before. Yeah. How, how do we get to that point? How, how do we walk forward, head held high, 
fixed on, eyes fixed on Jesus? Um, I think, well, in our house, we tend to have two different types of things coming out of our speaker in the kitchen. It's either the kids' playlist, which has, we like to move it, move it, and things like that, or it's um, worship music. And actually, we need to be doing both of those things. We need to be dancing around and we need to be having fun, but we need to be remembering who we trust. And it's very easy to sing those songs, isn't it, in the, in the good times. And actually, you know, for a, for a lot of us, we haven't had that many bad things happen to us. And actually, this is affecting everyone in some way, different for everyone, different depending on our circumstances, who we are, but it is affecting every single person on this planet. And this is the point at which we lean in. And those songs, those those words that we say, those nice Bible verses that we might have stuck up, you know, on the wall somewhere, and we're kind of like, oh, that's really pretty writing or a nice picture. Actually, this is where, you know, that kind of hits the fan, as it were, and we need to remember that the, that, that is who we're relying on. That is yeah. that is where it's at, isn't it? And th in the hard times, we need to continue to do the things we've been doing in the good times, but for real now. Yeah. And that's what we've been talking about in our Connect group, actually, online. Well, we were doing it in person, now we're doing it online as to actually... Do you remember that conversation we had? And it was like, oh, we, we'd need to learn to trust in that situation. We're like, okay, now that is the situation we're needing to trust. So we trust the only one who's trustworthy. Tim, just speak into that a little bit for well, us. Well, I, I completely agree. I think that um, pressure m makes us realise what we really believe. Uh, when you put anyone under pressure what you find eventually i mean we you know we're all we all have to deal with the shock and the the, the 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 frustration or the difficulty of it but after a while you find what comes out is determined by what they really believe um, and just as deb said it's it's so you know during the good times here um we've we've sung you know god is good and he's sovereign and he reigns and he's our provider and he's our healer and he's our comfort he's our joy and all these things you know what N now is the time when those beliefs that doctrine that theology will really come into play and determine our attitudes and our actions and and that's why it's essential that we build good theology in our Christian life because uh, when things get tough, that's when you need it. Um, and uh, I think this, as Dev says, a matter of, it's a matter of trust. A good analogy for this, I think, is a couple of weeks ago at the youth service, the afternoon youth service, um, uh, we had a, a pilot, we interviewed um, a, a Matthew, Matt Jackson, who's an amazing guy, a pilot, and he's a com with a commercial airline. and. Um, I asked Matt the question, um, what do you do when you know, you're an advanced pilot, you've, you've, you've learned the, through the basics, and you're asked to fly at night in fog? What do, you, what do you do when you can't see where you're going? And he said, uh, oh, that's when you have to have learned how to fly by instruments. And I, that was a really good analogy because I think for us, flying by instruments, you know, it, Let's face it, we're in the dark right now and it's, it's in the fog. And, and now's the time where we have to focus on what Scripture says and just as Scripture instructs us to do, walk by faith and not by sight um, and choose to believe that God is good all the time, that God is sovereign all the time. We don't alter that belief when circumstances change. No, it's, it, we, come, we bring that belief to our circumstances. So I think there's a kind of inner strength that we have to find. Uh, there's a courage. Uh, it takes courage to believe some of those things um, uh, now for us. But uh, yeah, I think that's, that's what I would say about um, walking by faith, not by sight, and, and encouraging one another to, to keep believing, keep trusting. God is going to work this out. Um, you know, it'd be easier for us to just lose our heads now and go, oh, it's all over. No, 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 no. God's going to work this out. Uh, in a little while, we'll be able to look back on this time and see how God provided and comforted us and rescued us in the midst of trouble. So let's do the things now that we want to have seen ourselves doing when we're looking back on this in a year's time, you know, when we've got through it. Let's not 
look back and go, oh, I ran around like a headless chicken. I wasted so much time worrying. I, I lost my head for a moment and forgot all the good things that God has provided for me in the past, all of the troubles he's led me through in the past. I don't know what happened. I forgot that. Let's not do that. Let, let's, let's hold on. And just to add into that, actually, I think it's, it's really important that we don't pretend that we all have that trust all of the time. And there's definitely been times in my journey where I've not had that trust myself. And so I've rung up a friend and gone, I'm not even sure if I believe in God anymore. Oh. Um, or, you know, and, you know, for other people to speak those truths over me and or, you know, to go to a website which has got pictures and verses and all of that and and speak them over yourself. And you might not believe them the first time, the first 10 times, but you making sure that you are doing that and doing that with others wherever possible. So so we've got the God of all comfort and the God that we can trust. But this is um, there's very real fear around suffering, around death, that passage that in 2 Corinthians, we walk by faith and not by sight is mm. in part at least about our future hope. Mm. And we serve a God who has suffered. Just just talk about that a little bit for us. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, there's a reason that at Easter, uh, Christians call the Friday, Good Friday. Well, if you look at it rationally, that just doesn't make sense. Why would we call the Friday on the day on which we celebrate uh, what, there you go, I'm using the word celebrate. The day on which we remember Jesus dying, uh, why do we call that good? Well, the reason we call it good is because we know the story doesn't end there and it carries on into Sunday where there is resurrection in new life. And so if we really believe that, if we really believe that our lives are eternal, that God has saved us in Jesus, if we really believe what the scriptures say, that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, and if you've called on the name of the Lord, you can be sure that you are saved, that you will spend eternity with our Lord Jesus and Savior in heaven. If we really believe that, then this life isn't the end, and our dark Fridays can actually become good Fridays. Uh, and uh, it matters that, that we we remember the, the resurrection and that, that God is victorious. Um, I think that kind of takes me on to the third thing. You know, if we've spoken about trust and we've spoken about uh, comfort and we've spoken about trust, the third thing is opportunity because God loves bringing good out of evil. I mean, there's no one like God for turning around a bad situation. God is a redeemer. He, he is the redeemer. Uh, he turns our mourning into dancing. And uh, right now there's a lot of mourning and I think there's more to come. I think it's going to get worse before it gets better. That seems to be uh, what's going on. Um, but God is going to turn this into good. Um, I, in a message to the, the church, I hope you... Uh, heard this or received it by email uh, I pointed out uh, in Genesis 50 where um, Joseph's brothers you know eventually uh, uh, Joseph having been sold into slavery uh, wrongly accused in Potiphar's house ends up in prison where just he's just faced all manner of awful things in his life rejection humiliation imprisonment slavery the works and then there's that miraculous story of where he ascends and becomes Pharaoh's right-hand man. And then his brothers visit him, and he has an opportunity for revenge, and he doesn't take it. And he tells his brothers, what you, the evil that you intended to harm me with, God has turned into good. God intends it for good. So for me at the moment, what I'm thinking about when it comes to this whole coronavirus crisis is... Um, yes, the comfort we need to receive from God. Uh, yes, we need to trust him and he will see us and lead us through this crisis. But also in the midst of it, there is great opportunity. Um, and, you know, just selfishly for, for a moment, this is kind of, you know, what's happening now with church and what's happened just over the last, I don't know, like uh, five, six days with church is a good example because under norm, normal circumstances, you know, back, back when things were normal two weeks ago, uh, we would have loved to have developed some online tools and been able to 
uh, uh, put things online and webcast our services and whatever. And I remember a few meetings where we were talking about that, and we, we all sort of went, oh, yeah, you know, maybe one good day when other things are quiet, we'll sort of get round to it, you know. And maybe over a couple of, year, couple of years, we might have evolved. But now... Well, there's no choice. It, 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 we're, we're, so what God's accomplishing now by revolution, what would have taken years through evolution. And um, uh, what I'm really excited about is if, if we play this forward, six, you know, let's say six months when things are back to normal, um, and we're all here, you know, everyone's gathered physically again and enjoying all those aspects of ministry, actually, we can have all this other stuff as well. And the reach... Uh, of the church in Bournemouth, and it's not just true for us here at St. St. Swithin, St. Clement's Love Church, but right across the town, the reach will be so much greater. We've always known that unchurched younger people and isolated vulnerable people uh, find it very difficult to come into church buildings, but much easier to access that online. And there's an opportunity in this crisis to develop the means to go and reach them. And uh, so, you know, God didn't intend, of course God doesn't intend uh, diseases and all that, but uh, he can use them for good and there's opportunity. And, uh, you know, just to circle round to um, people in the church, if you're in a situation right now that is really bad, maybe your business, maybe your working life, maybe your family, uh, maybe your own health, uh, maybe the sector that you're caught up in, um, the economic factors, I'm not trying to minimize that it's bad. It's bad, and it might get worse. But we can face it together with God and with one another, and there's comfort in that. Uh, we can trust God and pray like we mean it and believe it that he's going to bring us through together, and we can help each other to believe that and encourage one another and, and hold on through those. We're in this together, guys. It's tough times, but we'll come through it together. And then we can look for those opportunities. And maybe even, you know, with families at home, we're going to have to work on our family relationships, I guess, on our diets, on our exercise, um, uh, and, uh, you know, on our, on, uh, our sort of family interactions. And all of those are, are, are good things, really. Chloe's planning on doing couch to 5K. Oh, there you go. I'm planning on doing 5K to the couch. So, um, so comfort, trust, and opportunity... And uh, just just one final question, really. I think um, there there are so many opportunities. Uh, it feels overwhelming, actually, the number of people who need our our help. Um, where where do we start with that? Where do we start? Who are the people that we go to? How can we do that? Do that best? Yeah. I'm not sure we necessarily <laughs> have an easy answer. I think personally, I've started with the the people that I know. So we've been meeting as a pop-up connect group um, this term. Some of those people are very tech savvy, much more tech savvy than me. Don't mock me, guys. You know who you are. Um, and so, you know, we've been doing that. But there are people in our group who don't have mobile phones, who don't have the internet at home. How am I? Um, dealing with those, um, which is the answer is I'm getting on the phone. Um, we're also going to use the opportunity to write letters to members of our family who we know are further away, but there is no reason why you can't write a letter to someone who lives three doors down and, you know, detox the envelope and put it through the other um, makes also available, um, put it through the door. Um, we're, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of stuff out there on social media, on the news, on various things as to how we can care for those but I think if every if every single person takes responsibility for the people who are around them either physically you know, live close by or who you know their their paths cross or who they have some kind of community with Tim talked last Sunday about us um, mentioning to both the football teams that we're involved with as far as we're aware there's not Christians on either um, amongst their parents of either of those you know we're reaching out to them and you know but if we all start with the people who we come across with and as a church we've got other programs plans which Tim knows about uh, well we're, we're working we're recording this on um, Wednesday night the clergy team are meeting tomorrow 
uh, uh, to address exactly this point. I think the, the big message we want to get across is, number one, um, don't get isolated. So don't wait for other people to notice. Um, if you want uh, contact, please uh, just have the courage to sort of wave a flag. I know it's socially awkward. Um, and then for those people who are in a good place, I think just be mindful uh, as a family. If we could be mindful of, of one another uh, and, and just check in with, with uh, one another. The primary thing is the connect groups, of course. Uh, if uh, they can uh, be really be caring, and there is a lot of that going on already. That some wonderful stories, uh, connect groups I mentioned earlier. So um, and and it, you know you can email into the church anytime. Hello at lovechurch.org.uk, and we will try and mobilise help uh, for you on top of everything else. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. It's so good to have you guys leading us through this time. We're, we're really grateful. And um, guys, we're going to continue to love God. We're going to continue to love one another. And we're going to continue to attempt <laughs> to love life in the name of Jesus. So let's go for it. Be prayerful that God comforts us, trust him with everything we have, and seek out opportunities. And now we're going to pray. I would like to invite you to pray with me. Lord Jesus, we know where our help comes from. Our help comes from you. And time like this, like more than ever, we come to you and we pray. And we ask, Lord, that you bless us. That you come to our rescue, oh Lord Jesus. We pray for the NHS. We pray for the doctors, the nurses. We pray for the World Health Organization. We pray, Lord Jesus, for your strength. We pray, Lord, for your wisdom. We pray, Lord, that you come and, and you help, help us, Lord, in this time of difficulties. We pray, Lord, for the people that are already being infected. We pray for your healing. We pray, Lord, for an end of this virus, Lord Jesus, because you are Lord and you can do it. We pray for those that are already in isolation. They don't be lonely, oh Lord, or completely away from you. That actually, the good things will come from it. They will be closer and closer to you. They will be able to feel your presence, oh Lord Jesus, like ever before. Because you are a helper. You are the one that we can trust. And we pray, Lord, even we are in our homes now, with the education and with the, the school closings from Friday. Lord Jesus, we pray for wisdom. We pray that we have fun together as a family, that good things will come out of it. That we will be able to have fun as a family. That we will be able to listen to our children, children listen to their parents, grandparents, extended families. And, oh Lord, that we remember this at a time like, ha, ah, it just sounds like Christmas. We had time together. I know that's not the same, oh Lord. But I just pray that good things will come out of it that we become that hand that will help, that will help our neighbors, that will help people around us, that we'll be a different nation after this. Because you can do everything, oh Lord. We also pray, oh Lord Jesus, for the self-employed and for the business. Oh Lord, we pray for your provision. We pray, oh Lord Jesus, that they will have help. They will come from so many directions. They even know where the help comes from. But actually, Lord, the help comes from you. So we pray, Lord, come and provide for your people. There's so many things, Lord, we want to pray for. So many things we crying out for you tonight, Lord, and ask for your help. They'll be able to Look back at this time and know, Lord, that you carried us through this difficult time. And we pray, Lord Jesus, that your church will rise up. That your church will be the salt of the earth, the light in the darkness. That we are a church, we'll be able to spread your good news as ever before because you reign. And we pray for the spirit of fear to leave our nation and bring, Lord, your spirit of peace, of hope, and a future. 
because Lord, you reign. You are Lord above everything. And now more than ever, we trust. We put our trust in you with our lives, with our finances, with our families, with our day-to-day -day things. They're all out of routine now. We trust in you. And we know, oh Lord, that you are good and you reign more than ever. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. God, I look to you, I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you, you're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom, you know just what to do. to you I won't be overwhelmed give me vision to see things like you do God I look to you you're where my help comes from give me wisdom you know just what to do I will love you, Lord, my strength. And I will love you, Lord, my shield. And I will love you, Lord, my rock. Forever, all my days, I will love you, God. And I will love you. Jesus, we declare that again, that you reign. And we 
love you, Lord. We love you with all we are. Be near to us, we pray. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us now and forevermore. In the name of Jesus, amen. So that's it. I hope you really enjoyed this first attempt at a online Sunday service. Uh, we'll be doing this every Sunday uh, during the crisis, I hope, and lots else besides. Uh, you can follow us on social media, see the website. We'll uh, communicate as often as we can about everything uh, that we're rolling out, all the changes going on during this time. Really helps us if you can subscribe to this channel, like, share, all that stuff. And we'd love to read your comments, which you can put in the section below. See what other people are, are feeling about this and add your own thoughts as well. God bless and we'll see you again soon.